So uh, my name's Gabe Newell, I work at Valve. Uh, we're announcing a bunch of uh, different products and technologies here at GDC. Um, and the thing that sort of ties them all together is they're tools for us to try to keep PC gaming moving forward. I mean, PC gaming's been doing great. Uh, if you look at our Steam business, it's grown 50% year over year. And that tracks pretty closely to what with what's happening in the overall PC gaming market. And so when we try to think of what we can do, we try to pick sort of longer term bets that we can make, uh, things that will enable lots of people you know, in our world to continue to do stuff. Um, you know, if you look at what's happening on the hardware side, we get great year over year improvements in CPUs and GPUs. Uh, you know, we see 20% year over year uh, declines in bandwidth costs, right? So people get worried that maybe, you know, the internet uh, service providers are somehow gonna strangle, you know, innovation and, and so on, but there's no evidence of that. Consumers are very much in the driver's seat in terms of, of, of bandwidth. You, know, you have lots of innovative things like, you know, high re refresh monitors, 4K, 5K resolutions, you know, G-Sync and FreeSync. Um, you have the rise of user-generated content, right? I mean, Amazon bought Twitch for $1.1 billion, and it's because they recognize uh, how much uh, PC gamers are entertaining each other, right? It's, it's actually just as much fun for me to watch Dendi play Dota as it is for me to play, to, to play Dota. Uh, people in our industry sort of know what's happening there, but people outside of it are kind of surprised that like the League of Legends championship actually had more people watching it than the World Series did, right? That's, you know, that's how fast that's going. When you look at sort of, you know, workshop integration, this is something that we really believe in that, like the guys at Epic who are also part of this demonstration believe in is that figuring out how to make each player's experience and actions more valuable to other people leads you to sort of think about how can we make user-generated content uh, more feasible, not just you know being a good multiplayer or not just streaming yourself on YouTube or Twitch, but also uh, you know building models, building maps, finding other ways that you can be valuable to the other people in the community. So it's like $57 million so far since we've introduced workshops into Steam games have, have gone to, to community uh, creators. That leads to one of the first announcements we're doing, which is that we're announcing that Source 2 uh, is going to come out and that it's going to be free. Anybody who sees it as a valuable tool for you know, developing a, a new game and shipping it, you know, there's no license fee, there's no royalty, uh, they, they can use it. If other uh, engine manufacturers see stuff in it that's useful to them, well, they can integrate it into their engines as well. So. Um, the focus for us with Source 2, so Source was the game that we used to build Half-Life and Left 4 Dead and Team Fortress and uh, Dota, and Source 2 is takes all of that, does it better, but the big focus really is on productivity, is making creators more productive. But it's not just professional developers, it's uh, gamers as well. The way we sort of think of it is that there's kind of this role-playing game that everybody plays, which is you start off playing single-player games and then you know you level up and you can play multiplayer games and you're a fun person to play with, but you just keep moving up, you know, sort of the, the, the talent tree until you're making games and you know entertaining people that way. And that's why one of the reasons that we think just making Source 2 freely available to people. Uh, is an important step. If you look at what, you know, between the announcement that Unity has made, that Epic has made, Tim just did his keynote, it really puts the PC front and center as the premier content authoring platform. Um, another thing that uh, that's important to us is, uh, you know, it sounds kind of like a strange thing to do, but it makes sense, I think, if you look at it in terms of the overall PC industry, is we're supporting Vulkan. So Vulkan is previously known as uh, OpenGL Next. It was, uh, from our point of view, you have lots of interesting stuff happening in graphics technology right now, but it tends to be restricted to a specific platform or to a specific vendor's hardware products. And Vulkan solves that problem. It's a cross-platform, you know, it works on Mac, Linux, Windows, Steam OS. Uh, it's gonna be supported by, you know, Valve and Blizzard and Epic and, and Unity. Uh, and it works, uh, 
you know, with NVIDIA graphics hardware or ATI's graphics hardware or whomever. We're actually going to make a, uh, dr a, a, a Vulkan driver release for the Intel integrated uh, graphics. So it'll be source code that anybody can use. If you're a software developer and you want to understand what's happening on the inside of your graphics pipeline, you can look at it. Or if you're a hardware manufacturer and you want a reference design that you can build off of. And that's just how we're trying to support the Kronos Group's efforts to make uh, Vulkan uh, a cross-platform solution. Now, the next thing, in sort of the little pyramid of blocks uh, that we're making, are um, the steam machines. And this November, what we're going to have is we're going to have good solutions for people sort of in kind of good, better, best price points. I think everybody's familiar with sort of the middle category. At the same price point as consoles, except higher, higher performance. What we're also going to be releasing this November is Steam Link. So Link is a 49.95 product that runs at uh, 1080p, 60 hertz with low latencies. And it says if you have a Steam machine or if you have a Windows machine or a Linux machine or a Mac, you can now, for 49.95, play all that content on any of your televisions. So that's the Link. You can see it's you know uh, supports uh, Wi-Fi, supports uh, RJ45 connectors, HDMI, power cables are all in the box. You basically plug it in, and you know you pause a game in your where you've got your PC. You walk over to your television, unpause it, and continue playing. The first game we're going to show you here is the Talos Principle. Uh, it's one of our successful games from last year uh, from a small indie team in Croatia. You might know them better as the authors of Series Sam. So here they're you know, switching genres and uh, bringing us this uh, cool puzzle game experience. Um, so here this is running at 1080p, uh, 60 hertz on this uh, Alienware machine. This is the entry SKU at 479. Um, so we'll just get you in game to you know, um, get com comfortable with the controller, uh, camera controls, and uh, so here we, we set up the right touchpad of the controller as, as sort of a virtual trackball. So it, it gives you a good example of how we can virtualize basically any input device into the touchpads of the controller. So um, uh, to do that, we use haptics to give you, you know, feedback that corresponds to the, the current input device that is being emulated. Uh, developers will also have full control over the haptics. So if they want to convey, you know, like spatial information or context stuff uh, from the game, they can do that as well uh, if they write directly for the Steam controller. So here we have a case where, you know, you've got these new 120 hertz uh, uh, 4K monitors, and rather than having to wait five or six years for another iteration of the the console life cycles, uh, we're already taking advantage of it. So when Epic was thinking about Unreal Tournament, they were like, "Well, we, you know, we we don't think the controllers work particularly well for the kinds of games we want to do," and. We're all about visual f fidelity, and we're already pushed way beyond what they can do. So I think Epic was kind of excited about uh, the fact that the living room was catching up to Epic faster than they had originally thought. So, so this is Wes from Epic. So what you're seeing here is uh, a this is the pre-alpha version of Unreal Tournament. Uh, we've been working on it for about a year or so. It's a really open source uh, sort of community-driven project, which, uh, so, you know, as we announced this week, Unreal Engine is free. It makes it awesome to work with SteamOS. You know, we package right into SteamOS. Uh, there's no barriers. And as you can see here, I mean, this game is running in 4K um, at 60 hertz. It's silky smooth. Um, and it's, it's the kind of experience that, you know, in the past that maybe you would only... Uh, suspect to see, you know, when you're scrunched over your monitor. So, um, you know, we see this here um, as, you know, one of the future avenues of, of, of really the sort of high end of gaming. Um, and, you know, this map is a, is a good example of that this week, uh, Outpost 23, we released uh, at UnrealTournament.com. So uh, one of the things that we think is interesting, this is, we're going to look at a game that's 15 years old, right? Even though this game is 15 years old and Looking Glass uh, is no more, it's still, as a PC gamer, you're playing it with Link, you know, and you're using a Steam controller. What is it cool to us is that even though Looking Glass is no more, uh, this is a game, System Shock 2, that's being kept alive by its community, right? Uh, and... Uh, 
you know, to, you know, if you can keep this, this an entire game alive just because of what people are contributing, it's a way of getting people outside of the PC gaming space to sort of marvel at, you know, why, why, uh, why this focus of ours on user generated content and the fact that the experience really comes out of the community, not not just out of the of, of the game development team. The other thing is, and this is the get ready for the. The theatrical transition is 15 years ago, they were trying to think of what VR would look like, right? So, you know, the best and brightest people at Looking Glass and who's, you know, the progeny of that company have spread throughout our industry. You know, this was their take on what VR would be like. And now you guys get to see what our take is 15 years later on VR. So, a little high five, <laughs> knitting, knitting that together. There was, there, was, there was that link there, the Steam link. Linked it all oh. together. Yes. <laughs> 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 that, that one's on me. You, we, you, you opened the valve on your creativity. 